Okay, now we get into the meat and potatoes of transformations. How do we take a transform function, break it down to its parent, and identify the transformations? And what do those transformations do? We're going to get into it. So, a parent function could be any function. But usually, as we'll see in this video, one higher order non-arithmetic operation on x. And parent functions should be quick to graph. They should be well known, or they could be a graph already given to you. Y transformations. Well, Y transformations are identified by looking at the arithmetic outside of the parent. It's the arithmetic that happens to the parent operation. And it follows the order of operations. So Y transformations are fairly simple because they follow the order of operations. X transformations happen to X, and X is the input, so X is inside the parent function. And the tricky part about X transformations is you actually don't follow the order of operations, you inverse the order, and you invor inverse the operations. Okay, let's look at the types of transformations. If you add or subtract, that's going to cause a shift. If you add or subtract to x, it's going to be a horizontal shift, meaning left to right. If you add or subtract to y, well, that's going to change your y value. So it's going to be a vertical shift, and that will be up or down. Multiplication or division will correspond to, and this may be the toughest one for most people, a stretch or a shrink, sometimes called a stretch or a compression. If you multiply or divide x by a constant, you're going to horizontally stretch or shrink. It's going to be in the x direction. If you multiply or divide y by a constant, you're going to vertically shrink or stretch. And last, we have multiplication or division by a negative. Okay, If you multiply or divide by a negative, you get what's called a reflection. It's going to jump over give you a mirror image across the x-axis or the y-axis. If you multiply or divide by x by a negative, the x value changes sign, and so you're going to be jumping left to right. You're going to have a horizontal reflection, and that actually occurs over the y-axis. Similarly, if you multiply or divide y by a negative, you're going to change your y sign. You're going to have a vertical reflection, which is going to jump over the x-axis. All right. So now let's start getting into how do we identify the parent function and the transformations. So to identify the parent of a transformed function, look for the higher order non-arithmetic operation. And strip away all of the basic arithmetic because the basic arithmetic tells you your transformations. And again, parent functions should be very quick to graph. Uh, there are some common parent functions you should probably already know. All right, let's do some examples of identifying the parent function and the parent function graph. We'll focus on that for now. Consider the function f of x equals 3 minus the square root of 5x minus 4. If we were to strip away all of the basic arithmetic, the 3 minus the 5, the minus 4, you can see that what we have left is the square root of x. And that is our parent function. That is the one higher order operation, the square root operation, on x. To graph that's really simple. We can plot some points to see it. Plug in x values 0 or bigger that are easy to take the square root of and calculate the y values, which are their square roots. If you graph that, you get kind of this sideways half parabola function. So pretty simple. Let's do another one. g of x equals negative quantity x plus 3 close quantity cubed plus 8. Again, strip away all of the arithmetic, all the transformations, and we can see that what's left is x cubed. That's our parent function. The high order operation here is the cube operation, the third power operation. To graph this, again, very straightforward because it's one operation. Plug in several x values, some negatives, zero, some positives. Cube them to get the y values, and then graph it. 
and we get the y equals x cubed function. All right, let's move on to identifying y transformations. If you recall, I said y transformations are easier than x transformations. Y transformations are the result of arithmetic outside of the parent operation. It's the arithmetic happening to the parent operation. They affect the Y values. That's why they're Y transformations. And they follow the order of operations as you would expect. That's what makes them easier than X transformations. We'll do some examples identifying Y transformations and we have to identify them in a correct order if our graph is going to be correct. Number one, let's find the y transformations of the function f of x equals 1 half times the quantity negative x minus 3, close quantity cubed, minus 4. If we look at the y transformations, we're looking for the arithmetic happening to the cube, the parent function in this case. And we can see we've got um, a multiplication by 1 half and a minus 4. According to the order of operations, we do that multiplication first. So that's going to be our first y transformation. Multiply the y values by a half. If you multiply y values by a half, what happens is they get smaller. They get closer to the x-axis. That's going to give us a vertical shrink by a factor of a half. The second y transformation is the other arithmetic, the minus 4. So it would be subtract 4 from the y values. If you take every y value and you subtract 4, you're going to shift down 4 units. And those are our y transformations. Let's do a second example. g of x equals 3 minus the cube root of 5 plus 4x. Let's find the y transformations. In this case, it's written kind of awkwardly to identify the y transformation, so I recommend rewriting it as negative cube root plus 3. That way, you can easily identify the operations happening to that parent operation cube root, and they are the multiplication by the negative and the adding 3. And we follow that order of operations. So our first y transformation is to multiply the y values by that negative, which is the same thing as multiplying by negative 1. As we said before, multiply by a negative results in a reflection. And when you multiply y values by negative 1, you get a vertical reflection, which occurs over the x-axis. Next, we have add 3 to the y values. If you add 3 to every y value, the graph is going to shift up 3 units. Okay, so those are the y transformations. Let's look at x transformations. They're the result of arithmetic that happens to x inside of the parent operation. They affect the x values inversely from what you would expect. Remember, you have to inverse the order of operations and inverse each operation. Let's do some examples identifying x transformations. Example 1, f of x equals 1 half times the quantity negative x minus 3, close quantity cubed, minus 4. We're going to look for the arithmetic inside the cube operation, the stuff happening to x. And the arithmetic inside happening to x is multiply by negative 1 and then subtract 3. Those are our order of operations. Unlike the y transformations, these are not our x transformations. We need to inverse them. So what we're going to do to get our x transformations is inverse each operation and the order. So to get our first x transformation, we're going to inverse the subtract 3, because that's our last order of operations. So if I inverse subtract 3, I get add 3. That's my first x transformation. Add 3 to all the x values. If you add 3 to every x value in a graph, you're going to shift to the right 3 units. Then I work backwards through my order of operations, and I look at the multiply by negative 1, and I inverse the operation. So instead of multiplying, I divide my x values by negative 1. If I divide x's by negative 1, that's just going to change their sign, giving me a horizontal reflection over the y-axis. And there we've got our x transformations. Example 2, 
let's find the x transformations of the function g of x equals 3 minus the cube root of 5 plus 4x. Again, we probably want to rewrite this to make it look more like what we're used to, so I'll write it as negative cube root of 4x plus 5 plus 3. To get the x transformations, I go inside my cube root and look for the arithmetic. The first arithmetic I see is multiply by 4 and then add 5. Sorry, I forgot to highlight the 5 in red here, but I think you get the idea. Those are the order of operations. We need to inverse those to get my x transformations. So I inverse the operations and I inverse the order. So I begin with my add 5. I inverse it, which turns into subtract 5 from the x values. Subtracting 5 from x is going to move all of the x values to the left 5 units. Then I inverse the multiply by 4. Remember, I don't inverse the number. I inverse the operation. So instead of multiplying by 4, we divide the x values by 4. If you divide x values by 4, they're going to get smaller. They're going to get closer to the y-axis. So this is a horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 fourth. There we have our x transformations. So that is how you find your parent function, the one higher order operation, the y transformations, order of operations outside of your parent, and then the x transformations are the inverse of the order of operations inside the parent. Good luck.